your passion, and think before you've spoken such a fashion, ill becomes a pious man like you. I may be pious, but I am human too. With your celestial charms before his eyes, a man not the power to wise. I'd have such words sound strangely coming from me. But I'm no angel, nor was meant to be. And if you blame my passion, you must needs reproach as well as the charms on which it feeds. Your loveliness I had no sooner seen than then you became my soul's unrivaled queen. Before your seraph's glance, divinely sweet, my heart's defenses crumbled in defeat. And nothing fasting prayer or tears might do could save my spirit from adoring you. My eyes, my sighs have told you in the past but now my lips make bold to say at last. And if you're in your great goodness, you shall deem to look upon your slave and ease his pain. If you in compassion for my soul's distress, you'll stoop to comfort my unworthiness. I'll raise to you in thanks for that sweet manna, an endless hymn of infinite Hosanna. And with me, of course, then there need be no anxiety, no fear of scandal or notoriety. These young court gallants, whom all the ladies fancy, are vain in speech and action rash and chancy. When they succeed in love, the world soon knows it. No favor is granted them, but they disclose it. And by the looseness of their tongues profane, the very altar where their halted hearts have lain. Men of my sort, however, love discreetly, and one may trust their reticence completely, my keen concern for my good. Good names ensures the absolute security of yours. <laughs> In short, I offer you, my dear Elmir, love without scandal, pleasure without fear. Um, I've heard that I've heard your well-turned speeches to the end, and what you urge I can clearly apprehend. And aren't you afraid that I may take a notion to tell my husband of your warm devotion? And that, oh, supposing you were duly told, his feelings toward you might grow rather cold. <clears throat> I know, dear lady, that your exceeding charity will lead your heart to pardon my temerity. I shall excuse my violent affection as human weakness, human imperfection, and that all fair she will bear in mind. I am but flesh and blood, and am not blind. Some women might do otherwise, perhaps. But I shall be discreet about your lapse. I'll tell my husband nothing of what's occurred, if in return you give your solemn word to advocate as forcefully as you can the merit of Valer and Marianne, renouncing all desires to dispossess another of his rightful happiness. No! We will not hush up this final affair. I have put it all inside that closet there, where heaven, in order to confound the pride of this great rascal, prompted me to hide. Ah, now I have my long awaited chance to punish his deceit and arrogance and give my father clear and shocking proof of the black character of Tartuffe. Ah, no, Davis, I will be content if he will to deserve my leniency. I promised silence. Don't make me break my word. To make a scandal would be too absurd. Good wives, laugh off such trifles and forget them. Why should we tell our husbands and upset them? You have no reasons for taking such a course, and I have reasons too of equal force. To spare her now would be insanely wrong. I swallowed just enough wrath for Wait, far too long. And to spare and watch the insolent bigot bring strife and bitterness into our family life. Too long he's meddled into my father's affairs, forging my marriage chokes and poor hilarious. It's high time that my father was undeceived. And now, now I have proof that can't be disbelieved. Proof that was furnished me by furnished to me by heaven above. It's too good, not his best job. This is my chance. And I deserve to lose it. For one moment, I have to take a Yes! No! I must do what I think right, madam. My heart is bursting with delight. And say whatever you will, I'll not consent. 
to lose, sweet revenge, which I bent. I'll settle, ma settle matters without more ado. <laughs> and here, most opportunely, is my cue. Father, I'm glad you joined us. Let us advise you of some fresh news which doubtless will surprise you. Repaid with interest for all your loving kindness to our guest. He's proved his warm and grateful feelings to you. So the pair of horns he would reward you, yes. I surprised him with your wife and heard his whole adulterous offer of every word. She, with her too gentle disposition, would not have told you of his proposition. But I shall not make terms with brazen nature and feel that not to tell you would be treachery. And I hope that one's husband's peace of mind should not be spoiled by tattle of this kind. One's honor does not require it. To be proficient in keeping men at bay is quite sufficient. These are my sentiments, and I wish, Jameis, that you had heeded me and held your peace. I think I hear. Oh, yes, brother! I am a wicked man, I fear, a wretched sinner, oh, depraved and twisted, the greatest villain oh, that, that has ever existed. My life's one heap of crimes which grows, which grows every minute. There's not what foulness and corruption in it. And I perceive that heaven, outraged by me, has chosen this occasion to mortify me. Charge me with any deed you wish to name. I'll not defend myself, but take the blame. Leave what you are told. And try and talk to you like some base criminal from beneath your roof. Yes, drive me hence with parting curse. That shall be protest, for I deserve far worse. sinners, a rich, a murderer, a thief, phone me with all the names men most abhor. I will not complain. I burn them all, and more, I will kneel here while you pour them on my head. It's just punishment for the life I have led. Oh, oh this is too much, dear brother. You no heart. Are you so unwinked by this rascal's Listen, life? Listen, you monster. Oh my God! Villain! But silence! Can't you be a mind? Just one more word, and I'll tell you. In God's name, brother! Don't be harsh with him. I'd, I'd rather far be tortured by the stake. 
and see him bear one more scratch for my poor sake. Hey, wait! If I must beg you on bended knee to pardon him. This cannot be. That is true charity. What you Be still. Be still. I know your motives. I know you wish him ill. Yes, yes, all of you. Wife, children, servant. Conspire against him and dishonor his fall, employing every shameful trick you can to alienate me from this, this saintly man. Ah, oh, but the more you seek to drive him away, the more I'll do to keep him. Without delay, I'll spite this household and confound its pride by, by giving him my dog as his birth. You're going to force her to accept his hands? Yes! And this very night, do you understand? I shall find you all and make it clear that, that I'm the one who gives orders around here. Come, wretch, kneel down and clasp his blessed feet and ask his pardon for your black deceit. I ask that that swindler's pardon. Why I so rather... you ins you insult and defy your father. A, a sec, a sec. Oh. Oh. Brother, brother, release me, please. Never taste foot setting again. <laughs> 